Next up, we have Ian Freeman and Chuck Wee for State Representative Cheshire 16. Okay, we're going to start out with a 90 second opening statement. So, Mr. Wee. Thank you. And uh, I'm kind of surprised there's so many people here. Thank you for coming. But of course, we have the TV audience. Uh, I've um, had the pleasure of serving the city of Keene as a representative for the last 12 years. Uh, and I have come to really appreciate the wonderful progressive community. I think the uh, very frugal and careful uh, government. I believe government serves a purpose. Uh, it serves a purpose in terms of taking care of those least able. It provides a uh, judiciary to, to judge the conflicts in our pursuit of happiness. And it is uh, absolutely essential to um, work in so far as it can towards equality uh, and justice. And, and it seems to me that the, the people who are proposing to end government uh, by ending taxation are people who would love to have it handed over to the people who have the money. And I've seen too much abuse. We saw what happened on Wall Street in 2008. We, most of us have come to the conclusion that regulation is absolutely essential in a capitalist system. And I think that I would call myself a New Deal uh, liberal, I guess, uh, with the best description, probably to the left, pretty far to the left of the Democratic Party today. Um, I, I should have said uh, I, I'm, I'm a Democrat, um, small d Democrat, more than a big d Democrat. Chuck, we live at uh, 28 Dame Court, Keene, and have for the last 33 years. I've been in, in New Hampshire since 1972. I was a college professor at Keene State. Hi, I'm Ian Freeman. I am running uh, in District 16, which is all of Keene, so if you vote in Keene, uh, you'll see my name on the ballot. And I'm not so much running against Chuck here as I am uh, Delmar Burridge, who is the third candidate uh, on the ballot. Uh, Delmar, uh, if Delmar were actually here and he's not, I'm sure uh, Chuck and I would uh, have a major disagreement with him, and that is on the war on drugs. Uh, Delmar has advocated publicly for, for the war on drugs. He's a former uh, police officer. And he has also advocated that people snitch out their friends uh, who might be using, say, medical marijuana, for instance, to handle some sort of a problem. So uh, I just want to make sure that that's put out there, that uh, Delmar Burridge is not a friend of this community. He wants to continue locking peaceful people up in cages across New Hampshire. Um, just as a little bit more about me, I'm an activist. I've been active uh, for quite a, a number of years here in Keene, moved uh, back in 2006. And uh, I think that uh, New Hampshire has a, a bunch of problems, but one of the biggest problems that New Hampshire has is the federal government. And uh, they continue to kill people around the world. They continue to aggress against peaceful people all across this country. And I really don't see any benefit to having them around. So one of the most important issues to me is to secede as soon as possible and in a peaceful manner from the federal government. Okay, next we're going to do an eight minute Q&A with questions from the moderator. Okay, so the first candidate to respond will get 60 seconds, the second candidate gets 60 seconds, and then the first candidate gets a chance to rebut 30 seconds. All right, so the first question is going to go to Ian. If elected, what will be your highest priority? Thank you. And by the way, thanks for putting this on. It's, uh, it's been great. Uh, Highest priority, I think, as I mentioned, the federal government, uh, it taxes people and then it uses that money to destroy innocent life across the world. It regulates businesses into the ground. It, it drives them away from this country. And I mean, there's so much damage. We all are very familiar with uh, what the federal government does to people. Uh, I think that we have no benefits from the federal government. Uh, New Hampshire you know, spends a bunch of money into the federal government and is just controlled as a result of that. So I think we'd be better off on our own. Uh, we could be an independent uh, country and open you know, trade to the rest of the world and get along just fine and be able to take care of ourselves much better because we could keep all of our money here in this community instead of having a bunch of uh, killers and bureaucrats in the federal government take it from us. My highest priority would be to uh, turn around the huge damage and harm that's happened to New Hampshire under the Free State and Tea Party auspices of the last two years. Um, and I, I believe that before we can get 
to doing really important things like getting to a fair income tax based on the ability to pay, we have to reverse the decline that we see with this, with this current O'Brien speakership. My other goal will be to uh, increase civility. Uh, I agree with Mr. Robertson who pointed out the best governor we've ever had, at least in my 40 years, is, is, uh, is uh, Walter. Walter Peterson. Uh, and, and all Republicans used to be problem solvers. And that's why I went to Concord to become a problem solver to try and fix things that needed fixing. So that might be my highest priority. Okay, so I get a rebuttal. Um, yeah, so I, I think that there are some serious problems as well with uh, with New Hampshire. But ultimately, with the federal government, uh, you know, and all of its diktats uh, that they hand down from on high, it, they're not doing us any favors. And I like to ask people what it is that's so great about the federal government, and I yet to get a really responsive answer from anyone on that. Uh, they just seem to be an abusive parent, essentially. So the next question will be, um, you'll get the first chance to respond. What is your position on the voter ID? I think the voter ID law that was passed uh, two years ago and that was passed in a similar form in 2006, 2007 is voter repression. Uh, all and That's all. It, it has nothing to do with what is, you know, uh, making sure that there's no voter fraud. That's been investigated carefully by the Secretary of State and the Attorney General's office here in Keene, amongst other places, and they found no instances of voter fraud. It's a trumped up charge based on rumor and innuendo and ideology of the people who decided to do it. The Constitution would guide me, and that's the 26th Amendment, which says if you're 18 years old and you're an American citizen, you have a right to vote anywhere in any federal election. That's, that, that should be our criteria. What happened, I'm afraid, is we've lost a lot of trust in this country. And I'm not sure we can run a democracy, and I'm not sure we have a democracy, but you can't run a democracy without trust. You need to be trusting people. The youngest voters, the ones who are being repressed systematically this time around, are the ones who turn out the least. I think we need to encourage them, not discourage them. I agree with Chuck. I think that uh, I've never voted with an identification in New Hampshire, and I don't intend to. Uh, New Hampshire has some of the, uh, the best uh, voting, voting, I guess you want to call them laws or regulations, but they're very open. Uh, you can go in New Hampshire and vote and register on the same day. Uh, originally, where I come from in Florida, you've got to do that, I think, 30 or 90 days in advance of the election. So it's a much more open system here, and that encourages people to get involved. Somebody can think at the last minute, you know what, I do want to vote. They can go in the last minute, and they, they literally can. It's not a problem here. I think that's a good thing. I, I'm not going to rebut something that doesn't need rebut. Okay. All right. So, Ian, what is your preferred tax policy? I'm a voluntarist. That means I believe that all human interaction should be on a consensual basis, and I think that taxes are generally not based in consent, uh, that I think that humans should be interacting consensually, so therefore I can't support any sort of taxation. I believe that we ought to have fair taxation based upon the ability to pay. I have sponsored several income tax bills, including a homestead exemption. I've supported Mr. Robertson's attempt to get rid of this constitutional provision which makes it impossible to get progressive taxes in New Hampshire. Um, I'm also, uh, I've, I've already filed a bill to increase gas taxes, I think 10 cents per year, to pay for our bridges and highways because I think it's a community responsibility. And I think it's irresponsible for us to put off the necessary maintenance on important parts of our infrastructure. So I will support uh, a gas tax, which unfortunately is regressive, but I will do my best to turn the tax picture around to make it fair based on the ability to pay. If there's a good community program, like a bridge or helping poor people or whatever it is we're talking about, then people will support those programs voluntarily, as I do when I give money to local charities. Uh, so anything that's a good idea will be supported by people on a consensual basis. We don't need to have the threat of force behind uh, a community program because people do care about one another and uh, I think that we can do things without the threat of violence, which is what taxes are because if you don't pay the taxes, they'll come steal your house from you or possibly put you in a cage. Okay, now we'll open it up to the rapid fire questions. So David, who are you asking? 
Um, hi, I'm going to ask the same question I had been asking about, you. To about the candidates? Yes, if I can. Sure. Uh, somebody, Mr. Robertson, I think, said that it was a stupid question to have one issue. I personally have one issue in the presidency that has to do with bombing innocents overseas. And if a bomb was dropping on your house, Mr. Robinson, I think that would be the number one is, issue. Is he asking a question? <laughs> but okay, anyway, let's ask a question, uh, please. This is my question. Uh, could who, could who, he tell me which president wouldn't do that? Well, let's let's show the two candidates up here some respect and, and let them finish their portion. Right and after the forum is over, <laughs> then you guys can discuss that as much as you want and at length. Okay. okay. Who would you be voting for for president, and what is the number one issue for you? Who are you asking? He's asking both of you. You can go first, Mr. Okay, I'm, I'm happy to go first. Um, I believe that um, if Romney were elected president, that we would be very quickly at war in Iran. I believe that we would be using uh, drones as well as having feet on the ground. And I think I deplore as well Obama's policy about war, but I understand that things could be a lot worse, and I think they would be a lot worse if Mr. Romney were president. Here, here. I don't believe in the federal government, obviously, so, um, but if I did, I wouldn't vote for either of those two. I'm not going to vote for people who uh, aggress or advocate the aggression against other human beings. I'll be casting my vote for none of the above, which actually is going to be a tallied vote uh, this year, thanks to the New Hampshire Liberty Party at nh-liberty.info, uh, is where you can go to learn more about that. But uh, I believe our moderator uh, here is actually running for vice president as the none of the above option. So if you write N-O-T-A in on the presidential ballot, you'll have your vote counted for none of the above, and I think that's the appropriate uh, secessionist vote. Okay, Ms. Dalton, who are you asking? I wonder what you would do with uh, members of the community who don't choose to get along with everybody else. Like uh, criminals, for instance? Criminals or people who pound on their you know, spouses or get into a bar fight. Sure. I think that uh, I, you know, I support peace on the idea of a peace officer, for instance, which is what law enforcement was originally until it became law enforcement officers where uh, it was their role to restore the peace, to remove somebody who's violent from a situation. I think that uh, I don't have a problem with the idea of violent people having you know, some sort of a, a penalty for what they do. Uh, what I have a problem with is that uh, in this state and all across the country, innocent, peaceful people who've never harmed another human being, whether it's because they had a plant in their pocket or a no, chemical. I'm not talking about that. Right. So you would, would you be in favor of, of paying for a I think that anything that's a good idea will be supported on a consensual basis. So yes, I would absolutely pay for protection services, and I think a lot of other people would as well. So if I don't hang out in bars, or she pointed at Yes, he can ask this question. Who are you asking? So if, Ian? Freeman, so if I don't hang out in bars where I worry about having a peace officer, and I've got a fireproof house, and so I'm not worried about the fire, so I don't have to pay that part of my tax, right? I just don't pay. Well, I don't support the idea of uh, coercive taxation, so I think that you should support things on a voluntary basis as a member of a community. Uh, you know, I think there's some level of responsibility there. Well, if you want to be an old curmudgeon, then that's you know that's your choice. And then maybe other maybe young and maybe, green. maybe your community members uh, would not want to uh, do business with you, or maybe they wouldn't want to support you uh, because you didn't want to support them. I think that most people are good and that they will help others. So you're going to publish how much every person pays in taxes, so they know. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Well, how would they know I didn't pay taxes? I'm not even proposing taxes, so I'm not sure we even. Well, we're, we're a volunteer. They you so people talk. Well, we have the internet, and so people can uh, have their opinions. You know the United okay. Way? It's really, I don't know. I'm sure I could okay. look that up if I wanted. Oh, you could. All right, so that's the last question for Ian. So go yes, ahead, Yes, Mr. Weed. Um, part of the New Hampshire advantage is not just the lack of sales or income tax, but it's also the slightly lower gas in New Hampshire, slightly lower um, fireworks prices, slightly lower alcohol prices, slightly lower beer prices. And a lot of businesses are based around the borders, including in Cheshire County, that focus on selling these items to people that live all over the country that visit here. And so why are you proposing both an increase in the beer tax and the gas tax when that will show, it'll close companies 
It'll make people lose their jobs. It'll hurt the economy. Why are you proposing to do that to Cheshire County? That question sounds just like the, the people who wear orange badges to testify against me when I propose a tax uh, every time I've done it. I propose luxury sales tax uh, based on the ability to pay. But I, I think I do that because I understand that there's a community responsibility to fund necessary services. And I think it's a tragedy that we suck the Vermonters and the Massachusetts and the Maine people over here to buy our cigarettes and to buy things at a little cheaper price. And it helps our state to do that. I think it's crazy. Um, but you're, you're probably quite right with this existing corrupt system. It's, it's probably pretty dangerous to do that. However, I do believe taxes are important and necessary and without taxes, and if it were all voluntary, I know I've been told my whole life that you should behave on the basis of self-interest. And if people behave on the basis of self-interest, they don't voluntarily give up anything. Uh, so I think that, uh, that, that you people are a little bit naive about what you're gonna- What do you mean by you people? You people. What's that's kind of what, what it means. Most people Males, think we ought to get rid of government and not have taxes. I certainly am not you people. I find that offensive, sir. Okay, we have really, so. we have one more question available for uh, Mr. Wee. Any further questions? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Um, so Wee, I, I um, am concerned. You know, with this talk about it to me, it's like anarchy, and I wonder, um, do you think that if we ever had a sort of anarchy that took over? Would we all have to then go buy guns and be armed? Uh, great question. Um, if, if we were all equal, I think I'd be an anarchist. We're not. Uh, since we're not all equal, and some of us are very wealthy, and some of us are very frightened, and some of us are very insecure, guns, private armies, and that sort of way would be the way it would be handled if there were anarchy. But I would point out, just theoretically, anarchy is the most optimistic of political systems. It says that nobody needs to be in charge and that people will behave more often than not and probably many times more often than not in a decent and fair manner. I don't believe a corrupt society that has such great inequality can do that. Okay, great. So now we have time for um, each candidate gets a 60 second, 60 second closing remarks. So, um, Ian would go first. Uh, I have to disagree with Chuck on the point about self-interest. I think it is in my interest to help people in the community because we're all human beings and uh, we should help each other out, especially those who are in need. And I think there's plenty of evidence for that being the case out there with massive amounts of money being contributed to charities in this country, a tremendous amount, and more would be given to uh, charitable efforts. We would have more charitable efforts, more diversity of charitable efforts if we didn't have this big one-size-fits-all government uh, on our hands forcing us to give it money. And I think that uh, human beings are generally good. So I think that's maybe one of the, the viewpoints that's different between Chuck and I. But as I said, I'm not running against Chuck. Uh, I think Chuck's going to win this election. The only question is who will win the second seat. This is a uh, two-person floteral district, and uh, so two people out of the three who are running will win, and the third person did not come today, Delmar Burridge, who does advocate putting peaceful people in jail cells. And I don't think Chuck or I uh, advocate that position. Thank you for your time. I would uh, just point out that, that, that perhaps the most important thing for New Hampshire can't be acted upon in the next couple of years, but that is the fact that we have a huge tax capacity in this state. We are second in median income, we are 43rd in tax rate, and we have number eight in the number of millionaires per capita. We can develop a fair tax system. There's a plenty of surplus out there to make government work. I would just also point out that um, I was named, I think, one of the worst person in the world a few years ago because I sponsored the weed bill. Uh, and the weed bill was a decriminalization of marijuana. Uh, I, I do think that there's some crazy things about uh, the Democrats and some crazy things about the Republicans in our state. Um, I'll, I'll do my best to, to use reason and argument with those people. Um, but um, I'm not sure a lot's going to get done until we can reverse the damage and the harm that's been done in the last two years. Well, thank you very much. Um, this concludes the these are the last two candidates. Um, so don't forget to uh, fill out your uh, 
straw, straw poll, and then um, there's a black box in the back of the room to fold it up and put it in, and results will be available at 5 o'clock on fpp.cc. So thank you to all the candidates who came. That was wonderful and lively. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you, Thank you.